Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the Church of St Anne Shandon here in Cork. Our service today, the first Sunday after Trinity, is a service of morning prayer. We hope you've been able to download the service. Please feel free to join in with the words that are involved. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome to worship with us here today. In fact, it's great. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all people on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless you, servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the debt of his faithful servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to chapter 10, verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers in his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, 
raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You will re- you will receive without payment and give without payment. Whoever you are, and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. This is what we stand for. This is what we are about. A place of welcome, hospitality and love. For committed Christians, for those who might want to be part of something, for those who are not sure what it is all about, and for those who do not yet and might not ever believe. Whoever you are, and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. Be that through watching us on our YouTube channel, as we are all having to do just now, or when in the future you walk through our doors, you are welcome. Here, hopefully, you will learn about God's unconditional love for you. How God loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus. 
It says in the Bible, in John's Gospel, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loves us, loves us so much that he wants to spend eternity with us. This is a message that I really want to share with you, a message I believe with all my heart. That amazing, all-embracing love for us, that he wants us to be with him forever. Imagine that. God wants us to be with him forever. And what does he ask of us? Well, he asks us to come and see. Listen to his word in the Bible and think about it. Reflect upon it. Read about his son in the Gospels, the good news about his life. Get to know the Father through Jesus. He asks us to believe, to believe in his great love for us. That is what God asks of us, to come to believe in his promises, to recognise that we are loved. In the Gospel passage we have heard this morning, we hear of Jesus going about the place, teaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, the good news of God's love for all people. Jesus was a great teacher. I often wonder what it would have been like to have been in his presence, to have heard him speak, to have listened to his voice, to have looked into his eyes as he spoke about God's kingdom. The look of serious, seriousness, yes, he was talking about something serious, but also the look of love as he looked around at the people who were listening to him. Jesus knew that the people then, like many of us today, were lacking something. There was something missing in their lives. They were searching. They were hungry for hope, for something different, for a new way to live. Jesus could offer that new way. He could offer new hope in a God who loved them. A God they could, for the first time, as I said last week, call Father. Not a vengeful God, but a God who was and is a loving parent. A loving parent who wants what is best for their children. This was Jesus' message. God's sheer, unconditional love for all humankind. And it was a message that had to be shared. It was a message that needed to be shared because it is a message of great hope. We have a God who loves us. Good news indeed. Such good news that it needed to be shared and in fact still needs to be shared. Jesus preached the good news. He lived the good news. He was the good news. And he encouraged others to tell the good news too. Starting, as we have heard today, with the twelve, who were the first to be sent out. The twelve apostles, disciples, chosen and named by Jesus to be deliverers of the good news, are sent out on a mission. And I suppose, if you, even if you are the Son of God, you have to start somewhere. So even though Jesus broadened out his message later, he first sent the disciples to those of the lost house of Israel, those who had lost their faith or become disillusioned with it. 
Those disciples must have been fearful and anxious because the rest of Matthew chapter 10, from verse 9 onwards, has Jesus telling, telling the disciples how to travel, what to expect, how they will be treated, and to be honest, part of it doesn't make for nice reading. But they went and they did what Jesus asked of them. They told of God's love, God's unconditional love. They witnessed to God's life-changing presence in their lives. They told the good news of a new hope, a new way, a new kingdom. And people responded. Yes, it was a hard task but a worthwhile one, as people began to learn again about God, the God who loved them, the God who today loves us. There are two things, I think, to take from our Gospel passage this morning. The first, we are his disciples today. We are chosen and named by him just like the twelve. We are the ones who know his love in our lives. He trusts us to go and witness to his love in what can be a hostile world, a world that seems to have turned its back on God, and yet a world that is in spiritual hunger, a world that needs to reconnect with the God of love. How does God ask us to witness? Well, to look at the world, our family, our friends, our neighbours, with the eyes of Jesus, and to act and speak as Jesus would act and speak in any situation. That is how we are asked to witness. And secondly, there are some of us who have fallen out of love with Jesus, for whatever reason. But Jesus has not fallen out of love with you. He never will. Jesus wants those of us who have fallen out with him to come back to him too. He is there, just waiting, waiting patiently. For you to reconnect. It doesn't matter how long you have been away. He is waiting for you to reopen the channel. And you can do that as simply as closing your eyes and welcoming him back into your life. And remember, whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome. Jesus welcomes you. God so loved the world. God so loved you. He gave his only son. That everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Thanks for listening. Gospel Canticle the Benedictus You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous, in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. 
in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Almighty God, we ask you to guide your church, especially when differences amongst us seem to threaten our very existence. We face each other, but often do not see the face. We too easily make another of one another. Help us now to look again, to see Jesus in the face, and to recognise hopes, aspirations, and desires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we are part of the tensions and injustices of the world. Heal the resentment between people and intervene in the world's conflicts. Help us to walk humbly with you at our side, and when we come to the crossroads and have to choose which way to go, lead us down the path of justice and righteousness, while steering us away from the roads that lead to selfishness and sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, help us to be gentle with others and with ourselves. Give us, we pray, the calm that makes for consideration and respect for others that makes us courteous. Take from us hard words and the cynical look. Let us be to others as we would wish them to be to us. And when we fail, forgive us. And when they fail, heal us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Creator God, not limited by time or space, your son worshipped in synagogue and temple, and your spirit came in power on the disciples as they met in the upper room. By that same spirit, guide us as we prepare to reopen the church in this our parish. May they be placed may it be a place of safety where all feel welcome, experience your love, and are, are equipped in your service. We pray for those who through age of vulnerability will continue to worship at home, that together we may all rejoice in your goodness and know your blessing until we can offer unceasing praise in your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, we pray for all those who are afflicted by physical, emotional or mental illness especially though for the problems caused by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Help of them to keep their eyes fixed on you and give them the courage to face the trials and temptations that may come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth be with us and with those we love and with those whom we love and have gone before us. We pray now for those who have died recently, both from the coronavirus and from other causes, as well as those bereaved by their passing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for hearing our prayers as we move into the coming week. Help us to remember our Saviour's words as he sent his disciples out into the world. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of, Kev of heaven has come near. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord's Prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can no, do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for sharing in our worship this morning. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, have a really good day. Just some parish notices. First of all, this Thursday, we have got our vestry meeting at 7.30. It will be done via Zoom. If any of you have got problems in setting up your Zoom connection, don't look at me. Give Stephen a ring or email Stephen. He will sort that out for you. And please, as you come to the meeting, especially, um, uh, this is for all the congregation, but especially vestry members, as you come to the meeting, please make sure you have a chance to relook at the Bishop's pastoral letter which we uh, sent to you last week. Um, the church wardens, myself, and obviously the vestry on Thursday, will be thinking around the reopening, and um, we will be coming to some decisions, and we will let you know about them as soon as possible. If you would like to help in supporting the work we do here at St Anne's financially, you can do so via the I Donate page, or if you'd like to support in any other way, please email me direct. Any prayer requests, any pastoral needs, again, do not hesitate to contact me, either on the mobile number or via email. As I said, whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, have a great day. See you soon.